I chose feelings as a title because it was so often the answer in a dialogue with patients. They come to see me and they often have a problem that they have a lot of wishes for. They want it to change. They wish it would be different. And it becomes clear pretty early on that that's just not going to happen. Feelings are facts. They are what they are. And at some point, what we're after is coming to terms with them, accepting them, deciding what you're going to do that's consistent with your moral principles. I'm a psychiatrist who otherwise would have liked to have been a family doctor because family doctoring allows you to see a wider variety of family problems. Both of my parents started in a public mental hospital in Boston where people were really sick. So it makes you think more pragmatically about therapy and what it can achieve and how sometimes it can't achieve that much. We're writing together as a father-daughter team because my father has all the ideas, but years of being in the medical profession have made him write everything as if it were a chart. And his approach with patients is so funny. He uses humor very purposely to make people relax or change their thinking. I act as a translator. I make sure that the humor gets from his brain down to the page. I understand his humor because, you know, he raised me. I don't know if any other writing partner would A, understand his mind the same, or uh, B, not murder him. So I think that it's sort of a unique chemistry and opportunity to get his ideas into a book. A phrase we use a lot in the book and on our website is, uh, don't always trust your gut because your brain is full of ideas and your gut is literally full of shit. Almost uh, every topic we tackled in the book is something that some other book promises to improve, make you more helpful, give you better self-esteem, make you happier. And it was a pleasure to go after each one of them. <laughs>